Welcome to South Hills Manhattan Beach Online. My name is Brian and I am your campus pastor. <laughs> if you weren't there this last Wednesday, I'm sure many of you weren't. Um, we actually announced as a team from Central, from South Hills, that I have the privilege of pastoring South Hills Manhattan Beach and I am so excited and I gotta say, I am so grateful and my family and I cannot wait to dive into this community with every one of you. But we have an incredible service plan for you today and starting with some incredible worship. Let's worship, why don't you set everything aside and focus on worship right now so we can open up our hearts to receive what God has for us today. Hey South Hills Manhattan Beach, I hope you all have had a great week. We're so happy to be here worshiping with you online this morning. We're gonna open up in prayer and sing a few songs to the Lord. God, we thank you so much for this day. Lord, we thank you that this is the day that you have made, Father. And Lord, we rejoice in you, Lord. I pray that as we sing the songs, Lord, that your presence will fill each home, Lord, each place, God, I pray that you be glorified, Father. We love you and worship you.
Welcome again to South Hills Manhattan Beach. Welcome to Church Online. We are in Family Month. We are beginning Family Month. This is the very first week of the series. And I got to tell you, South Hills as a church, we as a church, Family Month is so close to our heart and it's so dear to us. Families, our community, and leading the unchurched into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ is the core of who we are as South Hills. But today we're going to talk about our homes, our environments, and what we provide to our families. This first week, our series, we're talking about family values are more caught than taught. Every one of us are who we are today, by and large because of our developmental years. Um, our adolescence, our environments in which we grew up in. And most of what has shaped us has come from the home. Good and bad. Good or bad. I'm going to share with you just a little bit about me as your campus pastor. I was born in Bellflower, California. Uh, my parents were a part of the Christian Reformed Church. I don't know if you know much about that, but it's a little bit different than the assemblies. And uh, my dad was a deacon, my grandpa was a board member, and um, I would have to say, from what I remember as a child and my conversations as an adult and what I know from my parents, um, we had a very religious thinking in those early parts of my years. However, when I was six years old, my parents got invited to Lakewood First Assembly, which is now Life Center, which is just down the way. Um, and they experienced an incredible transformation, as you can imagine. Uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit and all of those things that come along with that, with just a spirit-filled life, uh, was what they experienced in their transformation. And from there, they began to lead worship and ultimately moved into pastoral roles and kept going from there on and on. Um, myself, when I became a teenager, I experienced some rebellious years, let's just put it that way. I was pretty tough on my parents. I did not uh, give them an easy time as parents of a teenager who was raised right and who was taught well and brought up well. I still chose to try the world. I chose to try the things of this world and I was led back. I was led back to the church. You could call it a prodigal moment, but um, when I was about 18 years old, uh, my dad had gone through an experience with God that made it so real to him in just such a new and fresh way. And uh, I saw that. And I experienced it because he represented it and he actually walked in those things. He didn't just tell us what to do. He walked in those things. And for me, I was brought back to the church and I got involved in leading worship at 18 years old. Um, it was incredible for me. It was the start of my ministry and my parents were so proud. Uh, you could say I might have chosen to turn from what I was taught but I returned to what I was brought up to be. Today we're going to gain some new ground and catch up to what God has for each and every one of us. 
That's why today's message is called All Caught Up. Would you pray with me? Lord, we ask that you would open up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive today, God. We want to walk in everything that you have for us, Lord, and we want to provide an incredible environment for our families, our homes, and those who are around us, God. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would touch us no matter where we're watching from, no matter who invited us, how many times we've watched, or if this is the very first time we've ever heard a message from you, God. I pray that you would touch each one of us, Lord. Speak to us, be with us. But most of all, God, we pray that you're blessed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We are gonna turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. But before we do, I wanna talk a little bit about Paul. Most of us probably know that Paul wrote Corinthians, right? Well, Paul referred to himself as being of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews as touching the law a Pharisee. The Bible says very little about Paul's family, but Paul says in Acts, he was a Pharisee born of Pharisees. The family had a history of religion. Apparently the family lineage had been very attached to Pharisee traditions and observances for generations. Then Paul had an encounter with God that blinded him for three days, becoming the man who wrote almost half of the New Testament, the foundation of much of our faith. Paul says before his transformation that he persecuted Christians beyond measure, specifically Jews who had turned to followers of Christ. Now, when Paul says that he persecuted Christians beyond measure, I'm going to go ahead and go out on a limb and say it was a little bit different than us having to have church outside or online. The disciples, some of the disciples and some of those who followed Jesus were beheaded or crucified upside down, and that's just the start of it. They were persecuted beyond measure, and Paul was one who did it before his tra transformation. He was just doing what he was brought up to be, what he learned in his home from his family lineage. Why does all of this matter? Well, 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 says, Be imitators of me just as I also am of Christ. It's very simple. That's the hope of any Christian is that we can say, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. What is Christ like? What is a Christian? A Christian is a follower of Christ, right? Means we are Christ-like. Means something of what we do. Means a bit of who we are should represent who He is. We should look like Him in some ways, hopefully many ways, as many ways as possible. Paul it matters because Paul, who wrote a good chunk of the New Testament and who spent a year and a half trying to get the church of Corinth to catch up to what God had for them, is a pretty good example of what the Bible gives us as a follower of Christ, transformed and continually investing in transforming others. Paul was the perfect example. We can look at Jesus all day long in the scripture and say, of course this is what we want to be like. Of course this is what we're trying to go after and seeking to, to bring into our lives and, help, and hope that we can reflect that. But Paul actually is a little bit more attainable. Look at this. Paul was one who persecuted Christians beyond measure, had a transformation, and what did he do? He continues and continues to invest in transformation in others. He spent a year and a half with the Church of Corinth. He wasn't just a guest speaker and he didn't just sit talking to them. He lived it out and he said, be imitators of Christ also, just like I am. Romans 12, 2 says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. What is the will of God? What does it mean to you? What has it meant to you? I think most of us can say at the core of who we are, we think that the will of God is, is good for us, right? We think that the will of God is 
good and perfect gifts. I think I've heard that before. Uh, the will of God is for a future, right? I think I've heard that before. I mean, most of us have somewhat of an idea of what the will of God is. But let's take a look at a few of these scriptures here for a second and see what the Bible says about it. First Timothy 2, 4 says, This is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his purpose. And Micah 6, 8 says, He has told you, O man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. I don't need the world to tell me to stand for justice. And we don't need any organization fighting for justice when we are the church and we are the ones who our God says, do it. He doesn't give an option. He doesn't say, well, if you can, when it fits you well, I would hope that you would walk in justice and maybe a little bit of kindness and maybe some humility. He says, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God. This is who we are. This is the core of who we are as Christians. God says, justice is for all men. No matter your skin color, your background, or whatever else makes you unique. And he says it, it's available for everyone. And it starts in the home. It starts in your most open, comfortable, vulnerable environment. I think there's a couple things that continually stop us from being effective. One is because we're too busy being affected to be effective. And the other is we're too caught up in the things of this world to have room for the things of heaven. Well, you say, what if everything I've ever learned or caught from my environment is causing me to have such a hard time staying in his will? Well, Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him, to those who are called according to his purpose. Each one of us are called. Well, what if I'm not worthy of anything good, not worthy of anyone watching or catching what I have? <laughs> Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you hope and a future. I believe that God has that for everyone. And if that's in you, then you absolutely have something worth catching. Something worth sharing. But we can't do that if we're too busy being affected to be effective and too caught up in the things of this world to have room for the things of heaven. What can we do to beat this? To have room for the things of heaven and to be effective for his kingdom. Let's look at a couple simple things. Number one, Review the plan. No one ever planned to have a terrible life. That was never the direction we wanted to go. We just got off course. Got caught up in other things. We need to remember the plans he has for us. The future he has for us. And let that be what we wake up to. What we seek to imitate so others will do the same. Know that he has a plan for you. Know that it is to prosper you. It is to give you hope and a future and not to harm you. Know those things. Number two, release the pressure. We all fall short. We all fail at times. We miss a beat. We miss where we were supposed to go or what we were supposed to do because we get caught up in the things around us. But don't let it blow the whole thing up. Release the pressure and keep working towards the plan. Review the plan and release the pressure. Wake up and open your Bible or your phone. There's more than enough apps out there that you can go to for devotionals, scriptures, daily things that you can seek God in. Maybe just one scripture. Like last week we said pray, worship, and fellowship. Every one of those will help us stick to the plan and release the pressure. 
and know that grace and mercy is available for all of us. If we're all caught up in the things of the past, in the fails and failures that we've experienced, there's no way we can be caught up in him. You can't serve two masters. The Bible says in Matthew 6, 24, it says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And that's just one example that whole chapter talks about serving God and putting him first. Maybe we're not caught up in some crazy uh, evil things or things that we, we were afraid to share because they're so bad. Maybe it's just simple things. Maybe it's just the simple things of this world that we're caught up in. Maybe we're so caught up in politics right now that we can't focus on the plan and the purpose of the one who truly is our leader and our commander-in-chief. I'd like to challenge you to see that it's just a byproduct of how we view ourselves. When we're caught up in the small things of this world and we get bogged down and we see our trials as bigger than the plans for the future, when those are the things that we focus on, I believe the byproduct of those things is that we are not able to catch up to what God has for us. We don't believe in ourselves. We don't think we have anything to offer. Our desire for worldly pleasures is a result of our dissatisfaction with our own selves because we've never actually believed that he could fill the void with his insane amount of love and how he has a plan for each and every one of us. You want to be all caught up in what God has for you? You want those closest to you to reap the benefits of what you're caught up in? Be all caught up in him. Be all caught up in the things that God has for you. I guarantee you, he's got every good and perfect gift waiting for us. Waiting for us beyond the transformation. You might say, you know what? I am transformed. I found God. He found me years ago and I've been living for him as much as I can. But I am struggling. I'm struggling with my past. I'm struggling with the things that have happened to me and the things that I've been through over the years. And you know what? You're not alone. And I want to tell you right now, whatever you've seen in the past and whatever you've been through and whatever has been done to you, we can't rewrite that past, but we can look forward to a future. A future of hope. A future of, well, God says he wants to prosper you. That may not be financially, it may be in a different way, but God wants to bless each and every one of us. And I guarantee you, you have goodness in you, ready to come out. Family values are more caught than taught. It has to be what we represent for those around us to catch on to what we have. I want everybody in this community, I want everybody watching, I want everyone who calls South Hills Manhattan Beach their home and who doesn't call South Hills Manhattan Beach their home to know that God has an incredible plan for you. I believe in it and I'm going to pray for it right now. Would you bow your heads with me? Lord, your word says, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. And I pray that, God, for each and every one of us, Lord. That goodness would follow us. That kindness would be what we do. That we would do justice, Lord. And walk humbly before you. That no matter what our opinions are, no matter what our feelings are inside, God, and even no matter what our beliefs are, God, that we would still operate in kindness, and walk humbly. God, I pray for those who don't feel adequate, Lord. I pray for those who the enemy has beaten up and beaten up over the years, Lord. I pray for a refreshing and a renewing for each one, Lord. I pray that you would speak to them right now. Your love, your grace, and your mercy, and all that you have for them, Lord. Each and every one of us the same, God. I pray for those who may be watching right now who say, well, I don't really know God. I don't really know much of what you're talking about, but I want this. If that's you and you're watching right now, you have an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And we're just going to take that moment right now. 
Lord, if anybody's watching, I pray right now, Lord, that you would invade their space. Be with them. That your Holy Spirit would be the comforter. And I would ask that you would say these words right now. Just say, Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. <laughs> and that I have salvation available to me. And that all of which you have, the plans you have to prosper and to give a hope and a future, that's available to me, Lord. And so I say right now that you are the Lord over my life and I surrender to you. Please be a part of my every day. And Lord, we all pray that right now. Be a part of our every day. Let us be all caught up in you, not missing a beat. We thank you, Lord. Bless every person watching. But most of all, we pray you're blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. What a privilege it is for me to share with you. Thank you for listening, and I pray it touched your heart. Thank you. We're going to go into our time of giving. And most of you who are faithful givers, you know that we have four ways to give. You can give online. You can give on the Church Center app. You can give in person, or you can mail it in. And I want to say a prayer right now for all those who are giving. If you don't call South Hills your home, please do not feel obligated to give. If you feel it impressed on your heart to give to what God's doing here, we would so appreciate it. But let me say a prayer. God, we thank you, Lord, for those who give to your kingdom, God. For those who believe in tithing and for those who believe in giving above and beyond. And I pray that you would bless every person giving, every family represented, every job represented, every lack of job represented, Lord. Every school, every home, Lord. Be with each person as they give, Lord, and I pray that you would bless them beyond measure. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have for us and everything that you've done for us, Lord. And we look to the future. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week.